One of the biggest productivity gains you can have as a web developer is getting very good at navigating through your editor. I'm talking about being able to find the function that it is you're trying to work on, be able to open up the file that it is that you need, being able to navigate between two different parts of the code base that you're working on, or uh, be able to select and highlight and cut and paste and edit the parts of your code base without having to spend too much time on it. If you can get really fast and efficient at those things, you can have a lot more time to actually work on solving hard problems in your code base. So this is 15 or so of my favorite techniques for doing it. Some of them are just little tips and tricks and other ones are reframing sort of how you think about navigating through your code base. What we have here is called go back. And if you need to know what the keyboard shortcuts are, I'll, I'll throw them up on the screen, but you can always open up your command palette with the command shift P and just type in the name of the command that we're doing. You're going to want to do this because it will also tell you the keyboard shortcut for what it is that you're working on. Um, and for things you don't use frequently, you can't remember the keyboard shortcut. It's still worth knowing about these commands so you can run them in the command palette. So go back will sort of track where your mouse cursor is. So if I open up this socialstats.ts and I click on this get action word here, and then I scroll down and I click here, and then I'll scroll up and click there. If I hit control minus, it will allow me to jump back to where my cursor last was. And if I throw a shift into the mix, it will, will go forward. And I really like that because you can stop thinking about, oh, where was I? Or, or you're hitting like, sometimes people will undo redo just to get their cursor to jump back to that position. Um, so jumping back between cursor. And it also works on, on multiple lines right here. I'm just gonna open this file. And now I'm gonna open up this file. And if I hit control minus, I it just will open up the files. A lot of people don't even keep tabs open. They're simply just jumping between the locations of where they last were. Next one is being able to jump back to where your last edit location was. So if I make an edit right here and I give a save and I'll go paw through a couple of my other files here and I'm looking around at what I want. Now I say, okay, well, I want to go back to where I just actually edited it. You hit command K, command Q, and that will jump you right back to your last edit location. If you just uh, type in go to last edit location, it will show you the shortcut for that. Next one we have here is being able to switch tabs based on the recency of their navigation. So if you hold down control tab, it shows you a list of all of your open tabs and the most recent ones being at the top, right? So if you somebody just hit that really quickly, command tab, command tab, you're going to just toggle back between your most recent two values. And that's really handy if you're working on templating and CSS at the same time. Now, if you hold it down, you can, of course, cycle through all of them. And then you can go even further if you just search nav location in your command palette. You'll see that there are commands to move forward and back inside of that actual stack. You'll notice I don't have keyboard shortcuts assigned to them because I find myself just being able to use command tab or control tab uh, to cycle between my most recent ones. It's very similar to how applications work in Mac OS. Go to line number and go to column. This one's not all that handy, but if you have a stack trace that tells you of an error on line 22, simply open up your command palette, colon 22. That brings you to line 22. You can also put a colon 10 on the, on the end of that, and that will bring you to the column 10. I don't use a column all that often, except when I have a minified JavaScript bundle and I it tells me something like line one. Of course, it's all on one line, but you want to go to character 3000 to be able to see what actually went wrong. You're probably aware that you can open up files as well. So if you hit command P and you search something like tb.ts, you can open up the file by that specific name. And, and you're you're up and running right there, right? I often use that with fuzzy search as well because things like Next.js have everything named page.tsx. Um, so if I'm looking for the tips page, I'll just type in like tips and page there. And now it will fuzzy search it based on the contents of that search. Now, going to a specific file is good, but going to a specific symbol is even better. So in VS Code, a symbol is something like a function or a variable or a CSS selector or a markdown heading. So if you open up your command palette and then type in at, this will show you a listing of all of these symbols 
in that specific file. And if you put a colon on the end, it's actually going to group them based on the type of symbol that you want. So you see I have two functions in this file and six different variables. That searches in the current file, but you can also search on a workspace level. So if you hit Command T, or if you open up your command palette and put a pound in there, it's going to give you every single symbol in the entire project. And you can then quickly search for what it is that you're looking for. So here I'm looking for something related to the database and it's showing me all of the DB symbols that are in my whole project. That's great because if you can move from thinking in terms of your project as a bunch of files, to I just need to jump to either where I last edited this thing or where I was last looking at it with my cursor, or I need to move to this specific function. I don't know where it is. I might not even care where it is. A lot of people just hide their tabs because they don't care about it. I just want to go to wherever that function has been defined. And being able to open up that symbol right that like this let's go to get db boom immediately brings it right to me so open up your command palette we've talked about using at we talked about using pound to go to symbols but you can also just use the command palette to do a search in your files with the percentage sign so if you type in percentage sign in something like db that will search your entire project for the word db and you can just kind of go through it all and it will preview them in real time. This is much better than the sidebar search um, for when you're quickly just trying to find something in your project. I'm a big fan of it. You can click on this button right here to open up the sidebar search if you do need a bit more features, but I always reach for the quick text search before opening up my sidebar. Next, what we have here is being able to go to definition and go to references. So you work on some code, you say, oh, this function, get DB where is that defined, right? Don't go and open up your search and search for the name of that function. You can simply just hold down control and click it and that will click through to where the actual function is defined. If you want to manually do it, you can right click, go to definition and that does the same thing. Now the opposite of that is where is this function being used? That is references. So uh, you can either just click it via your sidebar or I will just hit F12 and that opens up this little peeker, which will show you both where the function is defined as well as where else in your code base is it both imported as well as being used. I find this a really great way to traverse a code base that you are unfamiliar with because you don't know where, where anything is. You can simply just click through to all the pieces. VS Code knows about your application, knows about your imports and your exports, knows about all of your symbols. So rather than doing everything based on text search, use the references and symbols on how they're all connected to each other. All right, let's talk about editing lines of code uh, rather than moving from file to file. First one is copying a line up or down. So I have this file here and this line needs to be duplicated. So I'll hit my option shift arrow key and down and that will duplicate the line and put me on that line. If you want to stay on the line, you can use the other arrow keys. You go up and that will duplicate it underneath it, but keep your cursor on that current line. Now, I also really like to use what's called line bubbling, which is I want to move this line up in this array. So what I'll simply do is hold my option key and use my arrows. And this will bubble it up and down. It works with multiple lines as well. So you can move them up and down. I use that all day long to rearrange items that are inside of it. Next, we have the ability to move and select and move your cursor by line, by word, by file, by letter. So this is really important for being able to move around quickly without having to use your mouse. So of course, you know how to move letter by letter. You just use your arrow keys. Um, but it, most importantly, I find myself just almost always just moving through word by word. So if you throw your option or alt into the mix and use your arrow keys, now all of a sudden we're jumping word by word, right? And you'll notice that this post table right here, by the way, if you, hold, uh, you throw in shift, that will allow you to select word by word or letter by letter, depending on what you're, you're doing. Um, but you see, I have this post table here and it assumes that post table is, is one word. Now, under using underscore gang won't care about this, but if you're using camel case, you want to be able to select word by word, you can throw in uh, control into the mix. And what that will do is now you're jumping word by word, but it's 
taking the capitals into account. So I have this post table here and I want to select the actual, just the word posts, right? I could like a sucker hit my mouse five times, um, but you can hit option control shift and right arrow. And now that just selects just the word posts. And then I'm going to hit my command D two more times to select the other instances that I have. And I can just go ahead and rename it to the values that I'm looking for. So jumping word by word is really good. Being able to jump to the beginning and the end of the line is really key. So that's just holding command um, and using my arrow keys to jump back and forth. If a line is wrapped, you'll see that this line right here is wrapped around the thing. You hit it once to get to the end of the line, uh, the visual line, and then you hit it a second time and that's going to get you to the actual end of the line. But once you do have something selected, sometimes you want to expand the amount that you are selected. So if you open up your command palette and just type in expand to this expand selection to scope is really handy because what it will do is it will sort of just creep out scope by scope. Um, and allow you to do it. So sometimes you got to do it a couple times to get exactly what you want. Oh, there we go. I, the whole object that I'm passing to this argument. Now I have it selected. I can go ahead and cut it and put that into a value here and then go ahead and pass the query in there. Now I love that, but it doesn't work with strings. And almost always I'm finding myself needing to select everything inside of a string. So I have this plugin called quick and simple text selection. And what it does, is you can hit command K and then just a semicolon and it will expand your selection to the stuff that is inside of the quotes. It works with backticks, single and double quotes. You can also use the same plugin to toggle quotes, which I find really handy. So if I have a string right here in his name of Wes, almost always I use pretty or something like that. It'll just fix the quotes. But if you do need to explicitly toggle what the quotes are, I guess it would just hit our command quote and it will cycle your string through the three different kinds of quotes that you use in JavaScript or two different kinds of quotes that you're using in um, whatever other weird language you're using. Last little tip I have here is, is turn on breadcrumbs. This little bar right here in VS Code shows you your breadcrumbs and it shows you um, kind of where you're at and, and nested inside of your code base. Um, but it can be really handy if you want to uh, be able to switch between symbols that are in your project. See, like, look at this. We've got all the different symbols there and you can quickly find one if you want to be able to click through them. But what I find it really handy is if I want to switch files and I know that something is like a sibling of it, but I don't know what the file name is called. I don't know what the function is called. So you just click on the name of the file and look at, oh, there's all my sibling files, right? You can click on one of those. Of course, you can go up much higher and see all the different folders that are in there. Again, I find that much better than opening up the sidebar uh, to be able to hunt around for it. That's all tips I have for you. If I missed anything, if you have any tips on how to move around, what are your favorite ones, please leave them down in the comments below because I'd love to hear.